This presentation is the part two of my solution for assignment eight. When we last left our story, I was showing you the code to make this work. So let's go on and look at something else. The home list is pretty much intact. If I click Find Homes, I get the same kind of home list I had before. Just looking at the code briefly, you can see that really the only thing that I needed to do was to change the relative referencing up here at the top for the style sheet and the images, and then I changed the href for on the logo. So we would go to assignment 8 PHP. Other than that, the program did not change from before. So let's go back and go back to the home page, clicking on this. Now, let's look at the guest book. There's a lot going on there. So here I have a form. But remember my last demonstration where I showed you the assignment itself, I have a hidden div here that we're going to use over and over again. Let's click on the View Guest Book. And you can see we have the guest book table coming back from a select statement. Let's go look at that code first. I'm going to start here, or here's the guest book code. I'm going to start in the body area. And so relative referencing again. Here's the form, first name, last name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, note here, I have a radio button. Radio buttons have to be named the same, but you cannot repeat an ID value on a web page. So this is called RB phone, and that's called RB email. Those are the IDs. I'm going to have to handle those separately. I start off by having the phone being checked. Checked equals checked. But when I deal with this in JavaScript code, I'm going to have to do some special things to know what's going on. So, phone, same thing we had before. The cities are still being generated by the select list in PHP. So, you've seen this before. We've done this earlier. I print the options out on the list, and so forth. Now, I clicked on View Guestbook. We did that, and I saw the guestbook. But it's calling the function called View Guestbook, and I have a return here. Now, this is important. We did this earlier with a submit button. On a submit button, if you return false, the submit would not try to submit the form. With an anchor, it's a link, it wants to go do whatever's in this href. And if I return false, or rather in this case, if I don't return false, it'll try to go to whatever I specified here. In this case, I specified nothing, but it still won't work right. So I've got to make sure I return false from view guestbook to suppress this link from firing off. Let's go back up and look at that code. I'm going all the way to the top, I think. Yes, right at the very top. So you've got the requisite Ajax code you have to do to instantiate the request object. So here's the view guestbook, the normal hit list open. Here's the program we're running. Simon 8 view guestbook Ajax. So that's what we're going to use. And it's going to return something into response text, return data, and we're going to process that data. Let's look at process data. Here I'm just sending dummy because I really don't need to send any particular information to get that information back. I want the whole table in the guestbook. So there's no data that has to be passed to a SQL statement. So process the data. We've seen this before. I pretty much am getting an HTML table back over here when it's successful. If I have an error, of course, I print this out. But if it's successful, my return data contains a table. But you know, I wanted to have a heading before that table. If we go back and look at it, you'll see that I do. Over here, I have guest book. And I did not return guest book from the Ajax PHP program. So I want to add it here in code. So I put it here ahead of the return data. Again, this is JavaScript concatenation. Put it in div data, and I set that to the inner HTML of the guestbook div. Now I'm using the guestbook div for quite a few things here, so remember that. Let's go back to the program for a second. Now we know we can add data, but first I can also validate. This gets interesting. So I hit submit, and it says you must enter a first name, last name, phone number, or email. And truth is, I didn't even really need to Ajax this. I can just use JavaScript to check it. Let's take a look at the JavaScript that I did use. So this is on the form, and I entered it. Let's go down and see where this is being called. 
So there is a button all the way down here called Add to Guestbook. All right, so that's calling a JavaScript function called Add to Guestbook. Let's go to the top of the page, near the top. That's fine. Add to Guestbook. You can see we're starting to get a lot of code going on here. Here it is. Add to Guestbook. The first thing I want to do is validate the form before I go on and do any of the other code. I don't want to add to the real Guestbook table unless I've got a valid form. So let's go look at Validate Form. That's down here, I believe. And there it is. Validate Form. So I'm going to get all this information, the value entered by the first name into here. And I have to ask, is it null or is it blank? It's an empty string. You must enter a first name. I'm building it into this error message variable. Remember, plus equals is concatenation in JavaScript. It'll append that to that variable. Do it with last name. So far, pretty easy. Phone or email. So far, no problem. City, okay? Now, city is a little bit tricky because city, when you don't enter anything, the default value is hyphen. So I've got to look for a hyphen here and then give that error message for a city. So that's how I get that back. I don't really even have to Ajax anything. I've got this information right there, and I can check it in JavaScript before even leaving that page. But I still put that information in that special div. Let's go up and see where I do that. Here in Add a Guestbook. If the error message is not blank, which means I have errors, I'm going to process the add for error message and then return false. When you hit a return anywhere inside a function, you are out of there. You don't do any other code in the function. Let's go down to process add really quick. We get the guestbook, the same div. I put the return data in there. That's error message. And I make it visible. It's not visible. You notice that it becomes visible when I do something. Otherwise, not there. This ends part two in my solution for assignment eight. We'll pick up the rest of this in the next video.